This video is about a very weird connection between the Arab world and parts of the left when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and actually the strange connection between the left and the Arab world in general. I think that you will find it interesting regardless of whether you support the Israelis or the Palestinians. In the protests against Israel, you see Arabs and Muslims marching together with left-wing organizations, student organizations, and even climate activists and my question is, which of the values that the left claims to hold, democracy, human rights, gay rights, women's rights, can be found in any Arab Muslim society? Not only do they not have any values in common, but everything that the left hates and criticizes about the conservative parties in their own countries is 10 times, if not 100 times worse in any Muslim society. To this I will add that this is a very one-sided relationship. Have you ever seen any Arabs demonstrating for women's rights? I don't know how much experience you have of relationships, but one-sided relationships are never very healthy. They're not good for you. Not all of the left wing is communist and it is legitimate to criticize Israel. But when large parts of the left criticize Israel more than they criticize all the communist and Muslim countries put together, then it makes me wonder. The left is secular, but Muslim society is extremely religious. The left says it supports women's rights, but Muslim women don't enjoy the same rights as men. It is the same when it comes to minorities in Muslim countries. If you are a left-wing activist, please let me know in the comments below which of those values cherished by the left can also be found in Muslim society. I've seen this funny meme of queer for Palestine and next to it it says chickens for KFC and that pretty much sums it up. If you are queer or gay or lesbian or non-binary or transgender, trust me, you don't want to be in the hands of Hamas. Do you know what Hamas does to gay people? The same thing they do to Jewish babies. It is not just Hamas. In almost all Muslim countries, you don't want to be gay. Of the 20 most dangerous countries for gays, 17 are Muslim. And even in the West, in the most liberal cities on the planet, Berlin, London, Paris, you don't want to be gay in the Muslim communities in those cities. Below I will leave a link to a poll done in the UK about the views of Muslims towards gays. Half of the respondents said it should be illegal to be gay. And the Muslim communities are the fastest growing ones in the West. So if I were European, I would say to the Muslims, Sabah al-Khir, these are our core values. Do you disagree? Do you think it should be illegal to be gay? Great, go back to Iran, Iraq, or Syria and enjoy your life under Muslim rule. Respect our values or go back to your countries. I think that's totally fair. Actually, it is the only fair thing to do if you don't want gays to be persecuted in London and Berlin 30 years from now. Let me remind you that Berlin was probably the most gay-friendly city in the world in the 1920s, and you know what happens in the 1930s. Today it is here, tomorrow it is there. Gays are just one example. I can give you more regarding minorities and women's rights. It is so easy. Give me one minority that is thriving in countries or areas under Muslim rule. You won't find any, not even one, from Morocco to Iran. You won't find any. Maybe you agree with me and maybe you don't. What I can say is that my biggest supporters are not Israelis, but minorities from Arab countries, Christians from Nigeria and Iraq, many Iranians, Kurds, and all of them say the same things. Westerners don't have a clue about what it is like to live in fear under Muslim rule. Those who don't like what I say don't usually oppose the exact details of what I'm saying. You know, you can't really claim that you want to be a lesbian in Arab countries. Instead, they attack me in general for criticizing Muslim society. How dare you criticize Muslim society? I do it easily. I believe we should be allowed to discuss these aspects of the discussion. It is way too important to just neglect them for fear of being politically incorrect. So yes, I dare to criticize Muslim society because I'm a liberal and I have a set of values I believe in. 
many of my friends in the West are confusing two terms that are actually almost the opposite to each other, multiculturalism and liberalism. As a liberal, I believe in individual freedom, freedom of speech, democracy, and women's rights, and there are many movements that I find wrong. Fascism, communism, Nazism, radical Islam. Let's bring the differences between multiculturalism and liberalism back down to earth. If you have a neighbor who beats his wife and tells you that this is their tradition, that his father beat his mother and his grandfather beat his grandmother, would you accept this as a multicultural person or would you stand up for your values as a good person? By the way, in some Muslim countries, men are allowed to beat their wives. Below, I will leave a link to a video from a television show made by the official Palestinian authorities on how you should beat your wife. Here is another example. One of the differences between men and women is that women have an organ that has no other purpose than to give the women pleasure. What a, what a great gift. In Egypt, which is not considered to be extreme, they cut this organ off in 80% of girls. If you see yourself as multicultural, do you think that's okay? Have you ever heard about it? Have you ever seen feminists demonstrate against it? I can give you many more examples. Now, I know what you're going to say, that I'm trying to divert away from the subject and the two wrongs don't make a right, but please wait. This weird connection between the left and the Arab world and their shared hostility toward Israel didn't start yesterday. So, interestingly enough, there used to be good connection between the left and Israel. It was initially the Labour Party that was in charge of Jewish institutions in the decades before and after the establishment of Israel in 1948. Many European Jews saw the Soviets as liberators in World War II. The Soviet Union even voted for the establishment of Israel, mainly to kick the British out of the area. But at the beginning of the 50s, their attitude changed and there was a series of anti-Semitic show trials in the Soviet Union. They were called the Slansky Trials, the Doctor's Plot, and the Knights of the Murdered Poets, all against the Jews. And then from 1955, the Soviets started selling weapons to Arab countries. In 1964, the Palestinian Liberation Organization was established. I will say that again, it was established in 1964, three years before the Six Day War, and before the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, before there was a single settlement. So what did they want to liberate? Could it be that by liberation, they meant the destruction of Israel? Anyway, which country was the first to recognize the PLO, the Palestinians? East Germany, a communist dictatorship that built a wall to imprison its own people, denying them their freedom and cutting them off from families and friends. It's like, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you how much of a terrorist you are. There were also connections between Arab countries and left-wing organizations in the West. Let's stay in Germany. There were two main extreme leftist organizations in the 60s, the RAF and the Revolutionary Cells. They were both communist, anti-colonialist, anti-capitalist, anti-Semitic, and of course, anti-Israel. They fought together with Arab terrorists against Israelis. Now, this is some high-level cookiness. They were based in West Berlin, a half city that was surrounded by East Germany. Their friends, families, and neighbors were suffering under the communist dictatorship literally 50 meters away from them. But how were they going to make the world a better place? By supporting Arab terrorists, of course. In 1976, two German terrorists and two Arab terrorists kidnapped an Air France plane to Entebbe in Uganda. It was the German terrorist Wilfried Böse der Böse who freed all the non-Jewish passengers and kept all the Jews on board hostage. It is interesting to see the anti-Semitic tradition here. His father selected Jews as a Nazi and Wilfried Böse der Böse did it as a communist. The beauty of tradition. Israel freed their Jews in an unbelievable military operation in which Yoni Netanyahu, the brother of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, was killed. In the last few years in Germany, there's been a wave of nostalgia for these left-wing terrorist groups. I wonder if it would be the same if they were from the far right. For some reason, the far left has this halo 
It's like we murder people, but we read books and use complicated words. So it's okay. Listen to us. We know how to create a utopian society. So what do the left and the Arab world have in common? It is something both do extremely well and that something is hate. In this field, both the Arab world and the left have tremendous success, phenomenal success. No one does it better than them. I will, I will start with the left, I think, and this is only my personal opinion, that 100 million dead is quite a lot. In every place where Marxist ideas have been deployed, there have been zero freedom, extreme suffering, camps where people will work to death, fear in millions of dead, the Soviet Union, China, North Korea, Cuba, and their Eastern European countries. It has failed everywhere and brought a tremendous amount of suffering. The biggest murderers in the 20th century were Mao Zedong and Stalin. Hitler only comes in third. In the Arab world, it is the same. I get so much hate from Arabs, and they blame the Jews and Israel for colonialism and the West for everything. But what is going on in Muslim countries? In recent decades, almost all Muslim countries have fought wars, resulting in 10 times, if not 50 times more casualties than in Palestine. The war between Iraq and Iran, a million dead. The war in Syria, half a million dead and counting. In Yemen, Sudan, millions have died. Lebanon, Libya, Pakistan. Of the 50 plus Muslim countries, hardly any have democracy. The Muslim world is extremely violent to one another and to non-Muslims. In many ways, the Muslim world today is where the Christian world was 400 years ago. Think about it. There are millions of dedicated Catholics and there are millions of Protestants. 400 years ago, they were killing each other. Today, even though they still believe in different things, Protestants and Catholics have stopped using violence. This is not the case in the Muslim world. The hate of the Muslim world and of the neo-Marxists is not only limited to their own territories, but it is aimed at the basic values of our Western society, at the fact that individual freedom takes center stage. In the US, you can stand in the middle of the street and shout that you hate Jesus. You can stand in the middle of the street in Israel and shout that you hate God. You can also do it in a Muslim country, but it will be the last thing you ever do. The left does the same. They forbid people to speak if their opinions are not the right ones. Do you know the book 1984 by George Orwell? People from the left like to like it, but they don't understand that it's describing them. Cancel culture, language control, the words you're not allowed to say, but it is more than that. The left wing take these theories of power and control and enforce them in all parts of society and culture. It looks at the world through these glasses that reduce the complex reality to power struggle. Is that all there is to your life? Men against women, black against white, oppressors and oppressed? Really, what a sad and stupid way to look at life. Here is another interesting point. The far right says what it thinks, they hate Jews and other minorities, and they actually say it out loud. Hitler, for example, spoke his mind. We may not like what he said, but he was at least very clear. If someone hates me, then I don't like it, of course, but I prefer to be aware of it. Those on the extreme left, on the other hand, talk about equality, human rights, and noble ideas, and kill millions. Stalin, Lenin, Mao, all of them spoke very nicely about progress and equality and murdered tens of millions of their own people. And the crazy thing is that the only place in the world where communism is how it was probably meant to be is Israel. The kibbutz movement is the only place where tens of thousands of people have voluntarily lived in a true socialist society for four decades. Only the Jews have succeeded in bringing these nice ideas to, to life, at least for a while, but in the end it collapsed here as well. So if you truly believe in the values of communism, you should be pro-Israel and also come and see for yourself why it eventually failed. The 
Kibbutz still exist, but most of them are privatized. I can't say exactly when I formulated the political views I hold today. They evolved throughout the years and throughout my studies. I also have an MA in history and political science, but I know exactly when I encountered this weird connection between the left and the Arab world. It was in the summer of 2006. I went on a World War II trip from Normandy to Stalingrad. I drove all across Europe. It was a crazy trip. I slept one night in Treblinka, met Churchill's daughter. It was also the time of the second Lebanon-Israel war, and I was shocked. At the anti-Israel demonstrations, I saw the hate in the eyes of the Muslims and the lefties that went along in London, in Paris, and in Berlin. Now, that was also the time of the war in Sudan, a war that is still going on. In Sudan, in Sudan there were about half a million dead and three million refugees. No one was demonstrating for them. You might say, well, just because there are other more terrible things happening elsewhere, that doesn't justify terrible things in other places. Well, if you are silent about the death of half a million, but absolutely outraged about the death of a thousand, then you need to check yourself. You might need to confront your own values. The levels of selective outrage of the left and the Arabs are staggering in their hypocrisy. Today, it is no different. Take the war in Syria, half a million dead, and that is a tragedy. But Israel defending itself and large part of the left are outraged. I guess that if a Muslim dies and you can't blame Israel for it, then there is no need for demonstrations. I guided Israelis around Berlin for 10 years. I've been close to the Reichstag and the Brandenburg Gate hundreds of times and seen lots of demonstrations there. Some of them were a gathering of brave Iranians, Syrians, and Muslims speaking out against the true atrocities in the Muslim world. But these demonstrations were small and polite and had no support from the loud human rights groups that love to criticize Israel. It is not caring about Gaza or loving the Palestinians that brings large part of the left and the Arab world together. It is hatred for the Jewish Western state of Israel. Hamas says it best. Israel will exist until Islam wipes it out. That is the first sentence of their constitution. The glue that holds part of the left and the Arab world together from the 50s right up till today is hatred for Western democracy and what it stands for. Today, you can see it in Israel. Tomorrow, it may well be happening in your country. A few final comments before I say yalla bye. I get a lot of emails asking me to publish my content on Instagram and TikTok and to add translations into various languages. Guys, I'm only one person. I don't have a crew. It is just me, my iPhone, and a few people walking by who don't understand why I'm standing on the wet grass at 7 in the morning and talking to myself. Also, I like the YouTube format of long content. If you want to use my political videos, I have a playlist of them on my channel. You can download them, edit them, cut them, add effects, music, translation, and dub me using AI tools, whatever you want. And you don't need to worry about copyrights or give me credit. Just do what you think is best and upload to your Instagram and TikTok accounts and spread the word. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with friends who need to see this. I want to thank all my supporters from the bottom of my heart for supporting me. Only with your help can I keep publishing these videos. You keep me going. There is no other way to say it. I love you. See you in the next videos. Yalla bye.